find myself in the spring with not enough planting space that's protected from rodents because we had an insane explosion of rodents. Oh, hey. Just like I thought we might. This is one of their entrances to their underground lair that they have built in another bed of mine that is now theirs. But that's okay, that just means that I don't grow anything in here that they're super interested in. So transition this over to cuttings and two year, um, well, second year pawpaws that are small. Um, lots of cuttings. Anyway, I'm making something that's sort of like these, but uh, is going to be rodent protected. Rodent proof. I'm just going to go out and say it. I'm going to win. <laughs> um, so, audio is probably terrible because it's windy, which is actually very welcome. This breeze is gorgeous right now. Anyway, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do it. So, <clears throat> cinder blocks on the bottom, and this is to support the weight of everything that's going to be in there. Um, probably eight or hopefully 16 inches of material. I might as well go deep on this one if it's going to be for nuts and things like that. So, I'm going to make a super strong base, which I am using um, this old metal pounder. Such a good tool. Um, if the ground's too high for the cinder blocks to lay flat and be level with the other ones, you just pound down the grass and soil with that thing. And there would be some tiny little bit of settling, but this spot is already pretty hard, so I'm not too worried about much settling. Um, anyway, then I'll roll out this hardware cloth on top of that, and then we'll build our boxes, um, go all the way down and then put some dividers in, and then I'll build cages somewhat like these. Because it'll be too crazy to have one cage going all the way down. Um, those, those cages have to be removable for easy digging. So I'm gonna probably do four foot sections, maybe six foot sections to make everything super weird and awkward and skimp on materials. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll update as I go along. So here on day two of building, we've got the blocks down, we've got the mesh on there, and I'm working with my friend Tama <laughs> to build two boxes. We're gonna put some supports in to keep it from bowing out and then fill it and then the long project of making the cage top. So I just more or less finished the frame for the top cages. <clears throat> They're really long. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. Um, the middle here is going to be the division. So that's going to be one cage and that will be the other. And uh, I did the random bracing job for um, my methodical carpenter friends, especially for you. Um, it doesn't really need to support any weight almost at all other than just itself. The That distributed um, the quarter mesh hardware cloth, which is what I'm gonna uh, clothe this with, um, really doesn't end up weighing a whole lot compared to the structure. So it doesn't have to support a lot of weight. So the bracing is haphazard because it's just what I had. Um, this actually came from a couple years ago, one of the other Norway spruces, just like this one, fell over in a strong south wind and I finally just um, got around to milling it up, or milling up some of it. Um, I can show a video about that later, but... So I'm just sort of... It's not the best amazing wood, but it's 
kind of scrappy and I ran out, but I used some <laughs> live edge, very trendy. So anyway, that's the frame. It's two feet tall, which will accommodate what I want because I don't want to grow trees that are much taller than that um, in one year in here. You can do that with larger spacing, but I don't want to have enormous trees coming out of here. I want a lot of trees coming out of here. So we've got the foundation, hardware cloth, boxes, um, and then the cage tops, which are entirely removable. And then the next step is, like I said, I'm gonna put the hardware cloth around here and I'm not gonna attach the hardware cloth to the top of these cages. Um, the cages are going to instead have lids. So I'll have to make another frame um, for lids, which I'll probably have like each one of these be its own frame so that for, that lid can come off and I can go in here and weed and do whatever I have to do without necessarily taking these off. In fact, I sometimes will um, tack these down with screws, this is the, the side walls, uh, the, well, the, the walls of the cages for the whole season so that they're nice and secure and absolutely nothing can get in there. Um, and then the lids I can take off to do some maintenance. And a lot of the time with this kind of air pruning, um, for fall, you'll just be able to come in here and pluck things out without actually having to take these sides off. But you want them to be able to come off in case that needs to happen. So this is the largest one of these I've ever made. It's 20 feet by four feet. So there are going to be a phenomenal amount of seeds in here, which is good because I have a ton of seeds that need to find a home really soon and I'm not comfortable putting them outside because of the rodent pressure this year. So this is where they're all gonna live. So here's the very nearly finished product. Um, you can see the tops are going to be, uh, well, I just got to finish cutting the ends off those, um, screwing them together and then putting the hardware cloth, uh, attaching it. So each one of these lids is its own lid. This can come off. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five. There had to be a little mini one here. Um, this is going to be a little lid because I wanted it to end flush with this thing. Um, oh, I also am going to cut this. And the reason being, I want to be able to take this whole frame off and this whole frame off. And all, as one, it's way too big. So I should have done three, but this is just what happened. <laughs> um, so I have to just finish making the lids and then this thing is actually rodent proof um, <clears throat> and I will seed in all the nuts. So you know in the cross section you've got air on the bottom, hardware cloth all around the bottom so nothing can get in there and then solid wood up to here. Um, I'll probably screw this on for the season and there's absolutely no gap anywhere. And then this cloth um, is on there with uh, a pneumatic stapler. That's the air hose there um, that, you know, puts the staples in really tight. And so I put them pretty darn close together. It's kind of ridiculous, but I just want to make absolutely sure that not even like no mouse, no vole, nothing could get in there. As you can see, there's just no gaps at all. Um, here where instead of doing one continuous piece that wrapped all the way around, I had to cut it. And so I put in um, a piece of wood there and stapled them together. So that's, can't get in there. And then the top, the lids are pretty darn much going to sit right on there. The top will be hardware cloth. And then I weight down each corner with the big rock. And that's it. This thing is going to be absolutely rodent proof. Four feet wide by 20 feet long um, of beautiful air pruning. The mix that I put in there was compost mixed with vermiculite. Um, 
took quite a bit of vermiculite to get this much material loose, but that will make sure that it doesn't crust up and make sure that it has good drainage. Um, and then some chicken manure compost and a handful of azomite um, minerals. So it's gonna be well draining, pretty easy to keep it moist. Um, I can bring a hose up here, but generally something this big, unless it gets really dry, we won't have to water. Um, if we do get a drought, we will have to water it. But so that's it beginning to end. Um, and then the next step will be, like I said, finish those lids and plant it, put the weights on and see what germinates. <laughs>